Real Talk with your main Chip Washington. When it comes to information, the main got an arsenal. Bring you up to speed with what you need. He's the local and nationwide news feed. Let's talk about it. Dialect to do something about it. Chip got the flow wide open if you got questions about it. Man, it's the show that brings you to your raw. To solve all problems, it starts with Real Talk. It's Real Talk. And it's the first day of a new week. It is the first day of a new month. And we are here. This is Real Talk Memphis. I am your humble host, Chip Washington. Very happy to be here with you on this Monday. You know, they, the old saying goes, it's better to be seen than to be viewed. So uh, you, you can't see me, but you can at least hear me. Uh, behind the board tonight is my boy Adam producing the big broadcast uh, Shout out to Marquette. He's not with us tonight, but uh, hopefully he will be back with us next week. So, how's everybody doing? You guys doing okay? Uh, we, 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 we have not uh, communicated in about seven days, and uh, it's been uh, quite a week. You know, we've all kind of recovered from Snowmageddon and uh, all of the ice and all of the problems that came from that, of course, Busted pipes, and, and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes as well. But uh, as always, uh, you can catch us on this fine radio station, 91.7 WYXR Live. You can also go to WYXR.org uh, to catch us, and you can also catch us on the TuneIn app. Uh, if you are celebrating a birthday, an anniversary, or a special occasion, congratulations to you. In whatever category you fall in, congratulations to you. Um, it's always nice to be able to celebrate a lot of birthdays today, in particular on Facebook. So um, if I didn't get a chance to personally wish you a happy birthday, uh, I am doing so now. And, of course, if you have an anniversary or a special occasion, as I said, uh, congratulations uh, to you. Hopefully we will have a good show for you this evening. We're going to talk about a variety uh, of issues. Uh, one of my, actually my first guest tonight uh, is the uh, Vice President of Engineering and Operations at MLGW, otherwise known as Memphis Light Gas and Water. His name is Nick Newman. We're going to talk all about busted pipes and fixing busted pipes and Boil water advisories and the whole nine yards. None of that going on now. Everything is good for right now. That's always a good thing. We're also going to talk a little bit later to Trey Moore. Now, Trey uh, has been on my show before. He was actually uh, on my, my show at my old radio station. He's a 21-year-old business entrepreneur. And this kid, let me tell you something. He has the soul of a, of a, of a mature Young man, he really does. At 21 years old, I mean, he has got his head on straight. Uh, he's all about business, and he will talk to you about that particular subject a bit later on. And uh, in the second half hour of the show, I'm just going to give you a couple of lines uh, that my guest is well known for. Uh, one of them is, don't lose your head, use your head, man. And the other one is gun crime, max time. If you wanted to know who he is, that is Gerald Trotter. He is a community activist. And, uh, of course, he's done some very powerful television commercials about the cost of doing business the wrong way. In other words, being incarcerated. He spent some hard years in prison. And uh, he goes around and talks to folks about that. 
uh, and hopefully we'll detract them from doing the wrong thing uh, because of the penalties involved in that. Speaking of, that's a perfect segue into news and notes. There was a anti-violence march sponsored by Stevie Moore uh, on Saturday. Uh, not too long after that, within the last 24 hours, we had seven people shot and five of them dead uh, in less than 24 hours. Might be six dead, actually, in 24 hours. Seven people shot and six dead in 24 hours. So, you know, again, an anti Violence march um, that was uh, had hundreds of people show up for that on a rainy Saturday morning. Uh, and, you know, again, you turn right around a few hours later and let the fireworks begin. Um, I don't know what it's going to take. Um, I do know that there is a serious disregard for human life these days. It doesn't matter uh, who you are, your gender, or anything else. I mean, we're, we are just... And criminals are getting more bold and more brazen, um, you know, these days as well. It used to be when this stuff happened, a lot of times it happened at night. It still does. But, I mean, these days crime happens right in the middle of the day, you know, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Folks start robbing folks and shooting folks in the whole nine yards. And, you know, we always have to kind of watch ourselves and watch our surroundings and watch our families. But, I mean, does it really have to be this way? I'm going to talk to Gerald about this. And I know that it saddens him when situations like this happen because it saddened me for sure. And I don't know what the answer is, but maybe somebody somewhere has it because I got to be honest with you, for these young people, 18 to say 21, 22 years old, local jail is not a deterrent at all. I mean, they will talk to you about going to 201 and what the procedure is and what you have to go through, this and that and the whole nine yards and when you're going to get out. I mean, there needs to be some type of deterrent in order to be serious enough for people to understand, look, this is not the road I want to go down. But we'll talk with uh, Gerald about that and a few other things a bit later on, the second to half hour of the show. Uh, Get vaccinated, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, We still have uh, a virus out here. Uh, The COVID virus has not gone anywhere yet. Uh, It is still active. Now the numbers are down. Uh, and the deaths are down, and we just need to make sure that um, even though restrictions have been lifted, that we try to do the right thing uh, in terms, and the right thing is to try to continue to do what the experts say, wear your mask, which really today is more important than ever before because we have variants out here, different strains of the virus in a mutated form which basically been coming from Brazil, coming from South Africa, coming from the UK, and there are those cases here in Shelby County. Now, I don't know how many there are, but the whole idea is to try to contain this so we don't have to go through what we went through for the past year. Um, I did hear before I got here that nationally, uh, the uh, infection rates um, have gone up 2%, the number of cases per day, and the number of deaths have risen Two percent. Now that may, on its face, sound small, but let me tell you something. You know, two percent can go to twenty percent in a heartbeat. So, get your vaccinations. The city has taken over the vaccination process. There are many, many pods that you can go to uh, to get your shot: first shot, second shot, Pfizer, Moderna. The Johnson and Johnson vaccine was approved today, and it's being shipped out now. I don't know how soon. We could get it here in good old Memphis, Tennessee, uh, but uh, it has been approved. It's the third vaccine that has been approved. Uh, I have not gotten uh, my my vaccination shots yet, but uh, hopefully that will happen sooner rather than later. Uh, And, um, you know, just get your vaccine. You know, call uh, the city of Memphis. Uh, There's plenty of opportunity for you to get out there, follow the instructions, do what you're told. Get vaccinated, okay? The opportunity is here, so please, please go out and get vaccinated. You're not only protecting yourself, but you're protecting other people as well. Well, so today was Monday, March 1st. Today is Monday, March 1st. And it was also back-to-school day for Shelby County school kids. First time in a year they have been back in the classroom. So my question is, how did it go? You know, and how many kids actually 
return to the classroom. How is the mask situation going? You know, these are the little ones, right, from K through 5. So, you know, I don't <laughs> know how particularly fond they are wearing a mask all day long, as well as teachers uh, back to the classrooms. So, yeah, are there safety concerns? Sure. Are there folks who are a little nervous about this? Sure. Uh, do they involve parents and teachers? Yes. So we'll have to wait and see how all this unfolds um, as time moves forward because, um, you know, school is back. Now, next Monday, uh, the upper grades, uh, 6 through 12, back to high school, uh, will be uh, heading back to the classroom as well, Shelby County Schools. So um, real curious to find out. Uh, I'm, I'm told that some of the schools uh, – the student attendance was low because the parents still are a little skittish about bringing the kids back in one environment. And, you know, I, I can't say as I blame them. Teachers uh, are getting vaccinated, and many of them have gotten vaccinated, close to like 5,000, 6,000 maybe. Um, but um, some of them are still nervous as well because, again, COVID has not disappeared. We do have a vaccination that can protect us, but COVID is still here, and you really need to – Understand that, okay, and and just stay locked in. Finally, before I go to uh, my uh, first break of the evening, I would like to commemorate this as being Women's History Month. The month of March is Women's History Month, and we salute all of the ladies out there uh, who are doing great things, uh, and they're great people, and what would we do without the ladies And what will we do without the women? I ask you. I ask you. So if you if you have a wife or or a significant other or or just know someone who is doing wonderful things out here in the community and in life and is a female, walk up to them and say, Congratulations, I salute you for Women's History Month, the entire month of March. How's that to wrap up a nice first segment? I think that's pretty good, actually. You are listening to Real Talk. I am Chip Washington, your host. We are going to take our first break. And when we come back, we're going to get into the broadcast. How about that? We are going to talk a little bit of MLGW business with Nick Newman. This is Real Talk. I am Chip. You know who you are. We'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Memphis. You can keep the soul of Memphis alive by supporting WYXR. Donate at WYXR.org. All donations are tax deductible as WYXR is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Are you interested in sponsoring the show and want to support WYXR at the same time? To find out how, email us at sponsorships at WYXR.org. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk. Uh, This is Chip. I'm glad you are with us on this Monday evening. Really appreciate it. And, uh, of course, uh, before the break we were talking, you know, we had some pretty rough weather here for the first time in quite some time, eight, nine inches of snow, and then we had freezing rain, and we had sleet and the whole nine yards. And uh, it it caused us all to kind of shut it down there for, for about a week or so. But uh, things have thawed out, and unfortunately, once that happened, we had some other issues to deal with, which were um, uh, pipes and 
bursted pipes and other issues like that, which caused the uh, Memphis Lake Gas and Water to issue a boiled water advisory. Well, that is over, and they have done a tremendous job of trying to get us uh, back to where we need to be. And to talk about that is my first guest. He is... Nick Newman, the Vice President of Engineering and Operations for Memphis Light, Gas, and Water. And Nick, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, man, uh, to say that uh, you have uh, been busy is the biggest understatement since, uh, well, I don't know when, <laughs> the last uh, a, a, a week or, or, or two weeks. Uh, tell me, Nick, just how challenging, I mean, I mean we, we know it was extraordinarily challenging, but, but how challenging was uh, what you had to face in terms of all of this, um, which basically s- prompted the uh, boil water advisory. Sure. Yeah, we, we the, the challenge was the extended period uh, below freezing temperatures and the extreme, uh, you know, the zero degrees and one degrees that we had. And it had two impacts. One, it, it actually froze up some of our water wells, which produced the water um, that goes to our plants. Mm-hmm. That that was part of the problem. We had some problems getting them unthawed. Uh, but the second and probably the bigger problem was you kind of alluded to that that our customers, a lot of our customers' uh, pipes had froze and busted, and so our water demand went up uh, a lot more than we see this time of year. So mm-hmm. it was having trouble producing enough water to uh, feed feed the customers, and and we were not able to do that because of all the breaks. Uh, and that's where we lost the pressure. Uh, and the state regulation is if you if your pressure is far below 20 pounds, uh, that you need to do a uh, precautionary boil order advisory that, that says essentially we we don't have any issues with our water. We we test our water and all that, but just precautionary in case in case there could be something because the pressures are so low. So having said that, and, uh, you know, talked about that, I know people were concerned about that. So you you issued a, you know, a boil water advisory just as a precaution. Nick, you've been in, with MLGW uh, for for a few years. Have you ever seen a situation this bad all at one time in terms of bursted pipes and, and, and other uh, navigational issues you had to kind of kind of walk around and walk through? I, I have not. I, I've been there 30, 32 years, mm-hmm. uh, and I've spent extensive time with uh, some folks in the engineering department, Charlie Pickle and Rob Hunter from construction, and, and even in their time period, we, we never had to issue a bull water advisory. So, yeah, it was very, very challenging. Uh, it's the first time we've ever had to do that, um, and we, we worked hard. The teams worked super hard out in the field and yeah. also at the plant. Yeah try to keep the pressures up we we didn't have to do that we would have to do the uh, advisory but in the end we, we just thought it was uh, better for our customers to go ahead and put that out there just in case there, there were some issues with the water and go ahead and provide the boiling but no I, I you know and I, I handle electric gas and water um, issues uh, ice storm would probably be on the electric side, the equivalent of what we went through on the water department this time. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And I worked, I know they work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I think I heard you say on one of the briefings that, uh, that you all held and uh, thank you very much and JT as well for keeping uh, the community so informed about uh, each step in the process of, uh, of all of this in the recovery. Did I hear you say at one point you thought you maybe had maybe anywhere from two to 400 um, breaks uh, in terms of uh, some of the water pipes? Well, we had, well, actually, um, that, that data got a little skewed. Okay. We, we've had, we, we actually had 156 broken water mains. Oh, that's a lot. So those are broken <laughs> water mains that on the MLG and W side. Okay. Um, on the other side, the customer side, you know, these are people's houses and businesses that are metered. You know, we had 6,000 of those oh, that my. we had to cut off uh, the water off to due to frozen pipes. Our burst pipes. Um, so yeah, we we had a a large number of customer pipes um, that burst. Now our customers did a great job. We we've, we've been able to get those cut off, and customers made the repairs, and a lot of them are cut back on, and we're back producing and using about the amount of water we were using prior to this emergency. But so, yeah, we we had to cut off around six thousand customers. Actually, yeah, around 6,000 customers who had burst pipes or, or um, frozen pipes in their house or right. business. You know, we're speaking with uh, Nick Newman. He is the vice president of engineering and operations for 
Memphis like gas and water. And, and, and Nick, you know, there's always been this discussion. You've been around uh, that, that company for a long time about infrastructure, you know, the aging infrastructure here, you know, old homes, old, old you know, uh, units in terms of not only the water, but, uh, you know, the electricity and the whole nine yards. It's great challenges. And I do know that there, uh, you guys are in the midst of a five-year um, kind of a rebuilding plan in terms of all of this, I think. And can you talk a little bit about uh, some of what uh, needs to be taken care of and, and the process of uh, uh, trying to eventually get us to a certain level? Sure. Yeah, we, we have a five-year plan. Um, the water side, uh, the plan is uh, about $180 million mm-hmm. that we are going to replace a lot of the wells, which I talked about a little bit earlier, that's yeah. water wells. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also have a couple of our plants that are uh, really old, so we're going to replace some infrastructure in those plants as well, uh, electricity, electronics, uh, all the cabinetry along with that. Uh, some of that is, is original equipment from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, so wow. a lot of that stuff needs to be changed out. Yeah. Uh, we also have some big pumps inside those plants that uh, we need to replace, and they're very expensive. Uh, and, and tough to replace. Um, we've actually got one station we're looking at, uh, whether we need to refurbish it or just build a new station. So, yeah, there's a lot going on in the water water area and electric and gas. Uh, electric, we have a lot uh, going on there with well as far as replacing uh, broken poles, or rotten poles, system automation where we get, we're get able to get customers' lights back on quicker during storms. Mm-hmm. Lots lots of work in our substation. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the gas side, gas regular stations. So yeah, it's 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 a big plan we've got going. We we're we're, we're very pleased that City Council uh, decided to give us that rate increase. It was it was they asked some really good questions to make sure we were spending the, uh, our customers' money wisely, and they agreed that we definitely need to make those infra- infrastructure updates. You know, it's it's it's, it's kind of uh, I don't know six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. You all have uh, great challenges to. Uh, uh, repair and replace uh, some of the uh, old and outdated equipment. You know, there's, there's always a budget battle that goes along with this. Uh, folks don't like to pay more money, you know, on the on the utility bills per month. Uh, and the city council is, 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 is a bit frugal with that. But there comes a certain point in time when you when everybody has to sort of come together and say, look, it's either going to be us, you know, being able to, get a rate increase so we can actually address these issues and fix these issues or continue on the way we are. And it seems to me that you guys are doing everything you can now, uh, even in terms of, uh, of, of, of power outages and things like that. It seems like the, the uh, restoration time, it, I don't know if it's, if it's me or not, but it seems like it's, it's quicker. And you're finding uh, 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 ways to do that, to get folks back online faster. But this really is, you know, going to take some time. And this, this is a process. Yeah, oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, And, and we've, we've learned a lot uh, with our storms and, and the things we can do to help with that. We're, we're quicker to call in extra resources from outside to get people's lights back on, yeah. um, which is very important, especially when we had frigid temperatures or, or when it's really hot, too. Yeah. We understand that. Um, our customers, it's, they, they need their power. Mm-hmm. You know, um, food spoilage, people really can't afford that. But, yeah, it, it's going to take it's going to take all five years, and we're going to be pushing to get, get all this work done in five years. It, it's a very uh, – it's, it's the biggest infrastructure uh, update that I've been, uh, I've been involved with since I've been in MLG and W all at one time. You're going to have some uh, quite the story to tell down the road for the grandkids and the <laughs> yeah. other folks, man. When you look back on 2020 and and and, and the part of 2021, and and and, and you know, as, as, as time moves along, we pray that we don't have another situation like this. Uh, you know, I'm not from this part of the country. I'm from the West Coast, Los Angeles. And I know that there are a lot of people every year seem to complain about the fact that, well, you know, we don't get any snow here. You know, it goes north of us and south of us. Well, I, I told everybody, I said, you got what you wish for. And everybody was like, yeah, we don't need to see it anymore for the next few years. <laughs> that's, that's the most snow I've seen since I was a kid. Man, that, <laughs> that, a lot of snow. that is a lot of snow. Well, Nick Newman, thank you so much for taking some time out of, I know, what is a very busy schedule uh, we were former colleagues at MLGW, and uh, you're always a, a great guy. And thank you so much for taking time uh, to, to talk to my Real Talk audience. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Appreciate the invite. All right, thank you, man. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. All right.
That was Nick Newman. Nick, uh, as I said, the vice president and engineering of engineering and operations for Memphis Light, Gas, and Water. Great guy. Uh, a lot of work to be done there. Um, you know, there's always something to do when you work for a utility company um, with an infrastructure that is as aged as uh, ours is. But Nick was very uh, honest and gave us, I mean, he, 32 years. Never seen anything like this in 32 years. That is a long, long time. Time. Before we go to break, I would be remiss if I didn't say a couple of things. First, uh, we have uh, changed things up a little bit here. Real Talk is now Real Talk Memphis. Real Talk Memphis. Why? Because the show is in Memphis, for Memphis, about Memphis, even though we talk about other things. So, Real Talk Memphis. And I am told that this show is now a podcast. And I am just excited about that. I've never been a podcast before. And <laughs> so I'm excited about, you know, what all that means. And you can uh, actually, uh, you know, go to, I guess, wherever it is you get your podcast. Uh, Shelby's nodding her head. And, um, you know, you can put in Real Talk Memphis or you can put in WYXR. Am I, am I right about that? Okay, yeah. So you, can, so you can check us out. We're a podcast now. How about that? Podcast. Adam looks very excited. We're a podcast. He really doesn't look that excited. Anyway, we're going to take a break. When we come back on this podcast slash radio show, uh, we are going to talk to uh, my young entrepreneurial friend. His name is Trey Moore. This is Real Talk. I'm Chip. Adam is here. Shelby's here. The gang's all here. Uh, you know who you are. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go too far away. We'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Support for WYXR comes from Crosstown Brewery. Now available, the Studio Session IPA, Raised by Sound, was brewed in collaboration with WYXR. A percentage of all sales benefit our station. For more information, visit crosstownbrewery.com. Like what you're hearing? WYXR is a listener-supported station. Help keep the sound of Memphis alive by donating at wyxr.org. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. Welcome back. Welcome back to Real Talk on this Monday evening. I am Chip Washington, and you can also check out this uh, podcast on wyxr.org. Wyxr.org. Did I mention that the show is now a podcast? So listen, uh, if you if you want to <laughs> if if you want to actually contribute to the uh, continued forward motion of this fine radio station. You know, it's a nonprofit community radio station, so you can donate. And I would encourage you and ask you to donate to wyxr.org slash donate as the spot just told you. So, you know, I mean, they are doing wonderful things here, and uh, we want to keep the music and everything else going. So, uh, you know, if, if it's in your heart to donate or you want to be a sponsor of this show or any other here on the radio station, uh, you can do so by contacting us here at the radio station. Okay, uh, so I told you earlier that, uh, you know, I spoke to this young man uh, about a year or so ago, probably longer than that, actually. He, was, he had uh, sponsored an event um, where folks were able to come out and uh, young people come out and, 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 you know, sell their wares and, and you know, it's, it's sort of like a, a yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what you call those things, you know, anymore. Trey will tell us here in a minute, but, 
Uh, he's a 21-year-old young man. I call him a business entrepreneur. He is a Christian young man. He is a really, really good guy. And he is uh, he's actually moving forward. He has written an ebook. We'll talk about that in a minute. But first, Mr. Trey Moore, thank you for being part of this show. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me once again. It's an honor. I really appreciate it. Man, look, I, you know, I was so impressed with you the first time you came uh, uh, to the station and uh, we chatted for a few minutes. And I was like, because I had some other folks um, had, had, had uh, reached out to me and said, you know, you need to talk to this young guy. You know, he really is all about business and all about really improving, uh, you know, uh, folks' lives and, 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 and really being a young example of what you can do if you stop the foolishness on the streets and work hard. Uh, so tell me, since the last time you and I chatted, what have you been up to? Well, I've been um, up to, I actually started another business, my clothing line. That's something that I've been, you know, putting a lot of effort into a lot of my time and hard work into starting a clothing line with a the, with the deep meaning behind it. It's called Chasing My Dreams. And, you know, the clothing line is for anyone but... I really aimed it towards people who are chasing their dreams mm-hmm. um, to, to, you know, become, to be in a better position financially so that they can go back and help others who are trying to do the same thing. So that's the aim. It just gives dream chasing other individuals something to wear and chase their dreams and stuff. Okay, you're kind of fading in and out a little bit. I don't know what happened to you. You were doing good there for a minute, and now I'm hearing kind of an echo. You, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you Say something so I can. Can you can you hear me now? I got you. You're good now. You're good now. Okay, sounds good. So, yeah, that's okay. So, so, been, so you've been busy. You've been busy. I have. Yeah. Yes, so, sir. So how is it? How are they going? You said Dream Chaser and the other one. How, how are they going so far? How's how's business? I mean, how are things uh, uh, moving along? Business is doing business is doing great. Mm-hmm. I've had multiple NBA players, other influencers to wear it. Mm-hmm. Um, the sales the sales are phenomenal. They're they're doing really well. And I, I started it back in, I want to say, September. So from September, I've been planning all the way up until September. And September is when I really launched it mm-hmm. and put my full effort mm-hmm. into it. And it's been it's been great. It's been history ever since. So, been, Like I say, different influencers, NBA players, and other people of that nature to wear. So it's, it's been doing really well. We are speaking with Trey Moore. Uh, he is a 21-year-old business entrepreneur, and he's talking about his clothing line. And we're going to talk in a minute about uh, financial literacy, which is something that's really important to him. But, Trey, first of all, let me ask you, how important is it for you as a young man um, to be uh, a role model or an influencer for folks in your age range coming up to show them that, you know, there is a, a better way and, and, and a more positive way to live your life like you're doing? It's very important to me. It's very important. It's, it, and it's important because when I was growing up, I really didn't have that, that person in my age bracket or age range who, who I could look up to and, and, you know, that could show me the way and do positive things that I'm doing. So for me, it's more about paying it forward, you know, knowing that I didn't have that person that like i say was in my age range to show me the way i just want to be that that positive role model and influence to the ones who are coming up behind me and show them that you know it's it's positive ways to go about life that they can be anything that they want to do be anything that they want to be and do anything that they put their minds to so you know it's very important to me just want to be be the best role model and you know help breed some of the best leaders of tomorrow well, it sounds like you're about to uh, you know you you're, you're at the head of the pack in terms of that, and I I've, I told you a long time ago, and and and, and it's coming to pass that I expect big things from you. There was something about you that uh, just kind of told me, you know, I said this this young man here is is going to be something, but I think the most important message that I just heard you say was the fact that you want to be a role model, reach back and pull others up to let them know that they too can be successful if they are focused and heading in the right direction. It's correct. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. So let, so let, let, let's shift gears a little bit here and talk about uh, financial literacy. I know that's a very important topic for you and uh, so important, as a matter of fact, that you have uh, put something together. So tell our listeners uh, about your ebook. So I have an ebook. It's, a, it's called the, the A1 Credit Playbook. 
and it's a do-it-yourself manual to financial freedom. And inside of the ebook, I'm teaching you all on financial literacy, on what a good credit report should look like, how credit reporting works, how you can get funded, how you can hide your utilization, and how you can actually use credit to fund your lifestyle. So I grew up, I'm not sure we all grew up this way, but I grew up, you know, being taught that credit was used for emergency, yeah. to use it for gas, mm-hmm. for, for groceries, things of that nature. But we weren't taught the benefits of credit. We weren't taught that, okay, if you have a, a great credit report and your score is good enough, that you can actually use it to fund your lifestyle, that you can actually use it to fund a business. You know, so so with me writing this ebook, I wanted to reach back and, and give the give the masses, give our community the information that wasn't taught to me. I didn't learn credit in school. I may have had a personal finance class, but that was covering the basics, like save, save this amount and spend this amount. But it didn't tell me about credit. And I know that credit is something that, you know, a lot of people don't know about and a lot of people don't have. So I wanted to be that, fill that void and just educate people on the importance of credit and financial literacy. That's very interesting. How, how is it that you decided on that particular uh, topic? And I mean, you know, and, you, and you're right when you say, you know, when people think about credit, you know, they think about credit cards and this and that and maxing them out. And a lot of people do not have uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the wherewithal or the financial restraint is what I would like to use term-wise. Um, to, you know, when you have a credit card or, or how to use it uh, to your benefit. How'd you, how did you decide that this was something that was so important that you had to kind of uh, invest in it a little bit further? Well, with me being an entrepreneur and being a human first, you know, entrepreneurs, we have to have some type of startup capital, you know, if we're going into entrepreneurship, especially in a, in a product-based business. So a lot of people don't start with, a lot of capitals, a lot of startup money. So me seeing that, okay, if you don't have $20,000 in cash, but you have a strong credit report, that can get you your startup amount. Right. And a lot of people, they overlook that because they see, man, I don't have the money, so you know I, I don't know what I'm going to do. But they didn't know that if you have a proper, like I said, proper structured credit report, that you can go get that same amount of money that, that you needed to start your business up. So I just wanted to, like I said, go back and help. Be, be that person to, to give them the information. You know, be the person to show them that, okay, this is how you structure it. If you structure it this way, you can go to this bank and get funded, and now you can start your business. Or better yet, you can fund the lifestyle that you want. A lot of people also don't know that credit cards come with certain reward points. So by you spending other people's money, which is the bank's money, sure. now you're getting reward points that you can redeem and you can spend on your everyday you uh, everyday expenses, such as your groceries. You can even go on trips or, or do whatever it is that you decide that you want to do by spending other people's money. Now, of course, you have to pay the money back, but that that's a given. We know that you know yeah. <laughs> credit isn't free money, that's right. but it's just certain benefits like that that you can use to your advantage that people never has never told us about. So like I said, I wanted to fill that void and be that person to, to go back and tell them to change the narrative about credit overall so that people can, can stop looking at it from a negative point of view or a negative aspect and just saying that credit is bad, don't get it, don't apply for it. When in reality, if you're applying for a, a home um, loan mm-hmm. or if you're going to buy a Mortgage. house, yeah, they're sure. not mm-hmm. necessarily going to say it. You have three hundred thousand dollars in cash. We'll accept it right then. No, they want to know what your credit report looks like. That's true. So, you know, by me give writing this book and, and just be, wanting to be there to educate the people and educate them on financial literacy and credit, I feel like this that gives us an uh, upper hand when it comes to applying for loans, when it comes to a, uh, trying to start a business or even living a lifestyle that we desire. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm just sitting here listening to you, and I hope that uh, that there are some other folks out here who are listening, uh, particularly young folks, but not just young folks, older folks too. You know, have, have <laughs> issues with credit and and, and credit issues and, and problems, and 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 and, and trying to, to get ahead in today's society. And and so I just I, I truly commend you for 
for your uh, for your concern and your caring about you know our our society as a whole because obviously you know if if people can do better you know then we'll hopefully all be better. So, yes, but before sir. you go, let people know exactly the name of the book, how to get it, how to go by it, what they need to contact, how they need to contact you, the whole nine yards. Go ahead. Well, the name of the book again is the A One Credit Playbook, and you can purchase the book at the A One Credit Playbook dot com. Okay. Again, the A One Credit Playbook dot com. You can contact me on Facebook, um, Trey Moore, for any inquiries regarding the A One Credit Playbook. Or if you just have any questions regarding credit, period, you can email us at info at morelifeenterprises.com. Again, that's info at more life. That's more with two O's, morelifeenterprises.com. And we'll be more than happy to assist you all with that. Well, I got to be honest with you, man. I'm just beaming with pride right now here. I am, I'm, I'm just <laughs> very, very excited for you. Uh, and for uh, all, more importantly, for what you're doing uh, for the greater good of of, of, yes, of young folks and, and for our community. And I hope, listen, anybody out here who's listening, who who wants to uh, know more about this, go to his page. Trey Moore, he's on Facebook. He's, he's on the social media platforms out there. Check him out and uh, reach out to him and make contact with him and, uh, and see if he can't help you as well. Trey, Thank you so much for coming on Real Talk. I really appreciate you. And uh, I really, more importantly, I appreciate you as a, as a person, as a young man, uh, doing great things in this, uh, in this city. And I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate you once again for having me. God bless you and your, and your entire platform. Thank you, man. Really appreciate that. Thanks, Trey. All right. Th- All thank right. you. Trey Moore, ladies and gentlemen, and I tell you what, 21 years old. He's all a 21 years old, this kid. And uh, and I say kid, but he's a he's a like I said, he's an old soul in a young man's body. This, and he is very sincere about what he's talking about here. This is, you know, real conversation about you know what he's trying to do to try to help others open up some eyes, pro- provide some opportunities maybe that you hadn't thought about. Very very good. I love it when young people do great things, and he's. He's doing great things, and and I'm really, really proud of him. Okay, so we're going to take another break, our last break of the show. And when we come back, we are going to talk about uh, what is going on in our community, and it's not all good news out here. We're going to speak to a community activist. His name is Gerald Trotter. You better know him as the man that says, don't lose your head, use your head, man, and some other things. This is real talk. He can do it better than I can. I'm Chip. (laughs) We'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Support for WYXR comes from Crosstown Concourse, offering over 1 million square feet of climate-controlled space to freely run, walk, or jog, take in a YMCA class, or grab an Explorer bike share ride on the nearby V&E Green Line. For more information, visit crosstownconcourse.com. Crosstown Concourse was founded on the idea that we are all better when we are together, which can be difficult these days. Luckily, Concourse has over 1 million square feet of indoor and outdoor space, so you can spread out while you hang out, eat out, or work out. Learn more at crosstownconcourse.com. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis. I am your host, Chip Washington. Very happy 
to have you with us as I am my next guest. And uh, he has uh, spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, talking to young people in particular about anybody who will listen um, about uh, the, the, uh, the bad side of being a criminal. Uh, he has uh, spent time uh, in prison. Uh, when he got out, he committed his life to being a community activist, which is what he is today. Uh, and he has done some very powerful commercials here in town, uh, two of which uh, the taglines are, are ones that we will never forget. The first one is, don't lose your head, use your head, man. And the other one is, gun crime, max time. My guest is Mr. Gerald Trotter. Gerald, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate you. Man, thank you for having me, Chip. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here, man. Man, man listen, and I, I, I know I didn't do, I, I know I didn't do your signature lines justice, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, honestly, uh, you know, you uh, have a story to tell, uh, and you don't mind sharing your story, um, and um, of course, I want to talk a little bit about what happened over the weekend um, in terms of the violence. Now, you were. A participant in the uh, the anti violence uh, walk that happened on Saturday. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, I got a call last month from Bill Gibbons, and I'd worked with Bill Gibbons on that uh, fed up gun crime, you know, campaign. That's what the commercials on the billboards and all were about. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, Bill wanted me to speak at a press conference on Wednesday, and then later on speak before the march and take part in the march. I, you know, I told him I would, um, you know, I'd, I'd be glad to do it, happy to do it. This is what I do. So um, some community people, community leaders got together, and we thought that we should have a march against violence. We march for things that we want. Yes. We thought we should march, show a big force to the community. The community liked it. Mm-hmm. It it lets people know in the area that there are people that care about the crime stop, and there are people that we'll be watching. So it's um it's kind of a morale booster. I like to see it. I mean, just things like that in the future will, will always be good for me. You know, um, after not too long after the march, and, and basically yesterday, uh, unfortunately, we had uh, seven people shot, six people dead. Um, one of the more violent twenty uh, four hour periods that I can remember having uh, in this in this city. When things like that happen, Gerald. What? How does it make you feel? I mean, what goes through you in particular because you are so passionate about uh, trying to prevent crimes like this? Disheartened. Disheartened. Um, almost discouraged. Not completely discouraged. And uh, not completely disheartened, but it's a kick in the stomach. Yeah. Not going to lie to you, man. It's a kick in the stomach. It's just that uh, just let us know we still got so much work to do. But... um. I just know that that means that there are six or seven families out there just, and probably 21 or 24 families because you got to multiply the three and the four because you got the other people. So you probably got 40 people, 50 people neg- negatively affected by those six crimes. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I do. I mean, 50 it, people going through, 50 people going through tragedy right now. Yeah. Uh, we are speaking with uh, Gerald Trotter. He is a community activist. And Gerald, for, for those um, who don't know um, your story, you've been very forthright and very honest about it. And I think that's the only way that uh, you're going to create change uh, is, is when people are given uh, facts about certain situations and uh, information to determine whether what road they're going to go down one way or another. Would you mind sharing a little bit about your, your story, if you don't mind? Okay, no, I don't mind at all. Um, let me just take it up from that day. Yeah, that'd be fun. Do you make it? Okay, well, we'll, we'll start that day. I'm a, a lifelong Cowboys fan. I've been loving the Cowboys since I was a kid. You know, and I went to this bar. Um, actually, what happened what, what happened was my wife and I, I was married at the time, and we had just bought a house. Mm-hmm. We were living in these apartments, but we had just bought a house maybe two blocks away from the apartments. It was, you know, it was a nice house, big house. Um, we were going to be moving in there soon. The game I wanted to see on television wasn't on television, and, and we didn't have um, we didn't have satellite. So I went up to this bar, a bar called Clicks, mm-hmm. to watch the Cowboys play. Now when I get there, the Cowboys are playing the I think the Bengals and the Steelers are playing the Eagles, and this happens to be, unbeknownst to me, a Pittsburgh Steelers bar, quote unquote. 
Yeah. They don't really own the bar, but this is where they hang out to watch their games. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I didn't really know that when I got there, but, you know, no big deal. So I'm there, and I'm watching the game, and, um, you know, got a bunch of Steelers fans in there watching the game. You know how I'm wearing a Cowboys jersey, by the way. You know how it is with Cowboys and Steelers fans. If you don't know, it's a rivalry that goes back, you know, to the early Oh, 70s. yes. Oh, yes. Big here. Really oh, yeah. big here. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was a Cowboy fan. My brother was a Steelers fan. Okay. Because the Steelers mm-hmm. were the only team that could beat the Cowboys, so that's why he chose that team. So, you know, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> It's just been, you know, I hit two teams bumping heads for, you know, over the past 50 years. So, uh, you know, we're teasing each other. They give me some tease, and I'm teasing them back. We're losing the game, so they're teasing me about that. I'm teasing them about having beat them in the last time we played in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going back and forth, blah, 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 blah. I make a bet with the guy that we win our game, and they lose theirs, and he makes the bet with me. The guy's name was Jonathan Smith. Um. Fast forward to the end of our game, the Cowboy game. The, the Cowboys were in overtime. Deion Sanders ran a punt back or an interception back for a touchdown. Uh-huh. End of the game. The Steelers game, I think, went into overtime as well, and they lost from a turnover. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they had been singing and making, you know, just having a good time. You know, had a microphone, a bunch of speakers set up around the place singing songs. By this time, he was quiet, so I pick up the money. I start talking some noise. I even pick up the microphone, and I'm talking a little noise, letting everybody know, you know, the Cowboys won, they lost. Mm-hmm. Uh, but nothing, nothing disrespectful, just, you know, teasing. Mm-hmm. I get smacked across the back of the head really hard. I turn to confront the guy who did it. About 15 guys stand up. So I decide to leave. Okay. So I walk out to the car. And as I'm getting in the car, uh, get in the car, and he uh, he comes outside with some more guys, mm-hmm. and I get out. And he, you know, and I, and I have words with him. I say, well, let me ask you a question. What went through your mind when you put your hands on me in there? What was that about? Were you drunk? Were you trying to, you know, you were just kind of just, just a little bit after the game, you lost your money. Just, you know, I'm trying to give, give him an out. Sure. My pride mm-hmm. is wanting to give this guy an out. Okay. Because my ego at that point in my life would not allow me to walk away from that situation mm-hmm. with him having struck me across the back of the head. Right? Yep. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. By me saying, what, you're just a little drunk, where well, you just kind of bumped into me, well, we're just, I'm trying to give him my out, I'm hoping he'll say, yeah, I was a little drunk, my fault, man, blah, blah, blah and so on, so that's not what he said. Uh, I, can, I can quote him if I can't quote him on your radio show, you let me know. Uh no well if 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 it's if it's if it's a foul language you might want to. I'll give you the letter. Bit. Yeah okay that's fine. Okay. I'll give you the letter. All right. I said, so, I mean, you know, what was that about? He said, well, F U N. Okay. Okay. That's how I get down. Got it. Okay. All right. So at that point, you know, my ego wasn't going to stand for that. It was on at that point. Okay. Okay. At that point, yeah. So I said back to him, but this is how I get down. And I uh, pumped five rounds into him. Wow. 40 caliber. Wow. 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 Yeah. Okay. So as a result of all of that, uh, obviously you were sentenced, uh, was it, was it murder or was it, I mean, what was the, uh, well, um, we went to, uh, we were second degree murder. Second degree. Okay. All right. All right. Second degree murder. Uh, I got, uh, 15 year sentence. Mm-hmm. 85% of that was 12 years and nine months. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what I did to the day. Wow. Speaking with uh, Gerald Trotter, uh, last uh, couple of minutes of the show here, he's a community activist. He's telling us, he's giving us the real about uh, what happened. And he wound up in prison uh, for almost just under 13 years uh, for a second degree murder charge. Um, what was the biggest lesson that you learned in all of this? Mm. Well, I spoke earlier about my pride and my ego. 
Mm-hmm. And it's just basically you have to be in control of yourself to keep your head. That's a slogan. Mm-hmm. And it, it sounds good and it's true. Don't lose your head. Mm-hmm. But the way you lose your head is you're not thinking past your ego. Got it. You're not thinking past your pride. Mm-hmm. You're just reacting on ego and pride, and that's what I did. And that's what I try to talk to these kids about. I try to show them a different perspective out of a conflict situation, mm-hmm. a potential conflict, you know, conflict ridden situation. Yeah. So in that situation, it was easy for me just to go home. It was easy for me just to walk away. Yeah. You know, and yeah, definitely what I should have done. So when you uh, speak to some of these uh, young young guys out here today who, you know, don't don't really much respect uh, uh, too much in the way of authority, feel like uh, jail isn't really, uh, you know, um, uh, an issue for them and they commit crime after crime and you see them, you know, on TV just over and over again and they, they, they get a rap sheet and it's this and that. I mean, I mean, how do you when they when you um, speak to them, are they receptive to it? Do they do they question you about all of this? I mean, I mean, how, what's the reaction there? Let me tell you, the first thing you you, you can't go to them uh, judging them. Right. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. Oh, okay. So I don't try to excuse what they've done. What I do is, it, here's the situation. Young black men in our community, I'm not saying anything right now that we already don't know, but young black men in our community have been given, for the most part, a faulty set of manhood instructions. Okay. They're getting them from places other than where they should be getting them from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, uh, the, the, the mothers aren't really giving them to them, but they aren't listening a lot of them don't have fathers, and they're getting them from rap music and a bunch of crap. Mm-hmm. Rap lyrics and just crap. I know I was in prison, and if you ask one of these little hardheads questions, they'll answer you in a rap lyric. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As if those are the answers to life. Yeah. yeah. And and here's the thing. I went to, uh, I graduated from Los Angeles College School back in 87. And so I went to school with those kids. Mm-hmm. And I saw them and how they had rules to manhood. And their rules to manhood and the rules of manhood that my father gave me were different. Mm-hmm. And so that meant the angles that we looked at life, the perspectives that we saw life through was different. Mm-hmm. And so what the kids in our community need, we can't afford to give them, but it's some sort of therapy, some sort of therapy about their thinking and about their behavior. And so what I did is 10 years in prison, I studied cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm-hmm. And so when I talk to these kids, this is what I do with them, man. I run them through a situation, their last conflict, fighting, shooting, whatever it was. And we go through each step, each step of it, step by step. And after every step of it, after every blow, after every insult, I ask them, how did that make you feel? Mm-hmm. Why do you think he did that? Mm-hmm. And what that does, man, is it tricks them into thinking about what they do when they do things. Yeah. If you do enough scenarios with any human being that way, it will start making them think about the steps in their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I try to give them is therapy without them ever knowing it. Wow. Wow. That's deep. Gerald, um, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm up against it now, but uh, I want you to come back on the show uh, one of these times. I really would like to have, uh, you know, more conversation with you about this and and really just kind of what the answer is uh, with what we deal with on a daily basis out here. But I want to thank you for coming on the show tonight and uh, really giving us an education. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have you back. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Have a good one. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, our show for this evening. And as Adam plays me out, uh, it is uh, always my pleasure to come and be with you. This has been a great show. And I hope that you learned something, and more importantly, that I hope that you enjoy it. And we're a podcast now, ladies and gentlemen, WYXR.org. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, in between time, please stay stay safe out there. Be careful. Take care of each other. Support each other. Encourage, love, and motivate each other. That's what it's all about. Uh, until next Monday, 
I'm Chip, and I'm out.